I'd like to do this drawing of fruit uh, and to explain my methods of doing it. Well, first I start with a small drawing and I try to establish the tones and the shape of what I want. But, of course, first of all, you're going with what the client wants and you have to abide by his rules or her rules, whoever commissions the drawing from you, or the painting from you, and you then have to try and comply with your artistic ability, what it is they want. And this is exactly what I was asked to do, so I am going to head and do it. The um, drawing is first of all applied to the larger painting by using the smaller drawing and lining with horizontal and vertical lines the position relative to the smaller drawing to the larger drawing. I'm just at this moment finishing off uh, some of the tones and larger areas on the big picture so that I've got an idea of where my colours have got to be laid. Now I'm just going to um, finish this large drawing and just rub out the guidelines using a, a malleable rubber and I've got my lines coming vertical and horizontal which I don't think you can probably see from here but uh, rubbing them out is a simple matter of just running your rubber along the same direction as the lines are, have been placed and it seems to make a fairly good job of it. Now to start the underpainting, I have first of all done a smaller version um, in watercolour just to give me a, a, an idea of the placement of the colours, including the background. And the background that he wanted was, um, in my particular case, this client actually owns a Chinese restaurant and this was for a dining room wall. Um, so I had to comply with the colours that he wanted. So blocking in the first colours, I have um, tried to balance his wall colour with my background, which is what he wanted. He didn't want anything on a table, he didn't want, he just wanted a bowl of fruit, which was a bit difficult, like having a bowl in space. I just decided to put a, a shadow underneath it. But this is the blocking in stage, and I have now established my colours. Now, when people talk about tones, it's generally established that the tones are the things that are in juxtaposition to something else, so that one tone stands out against the next. Um, for example, here, um, I'm putting a tone of uh, purple, which are the graves, and if you notice, the, m the way I'm using the brush is to make sort of circles and circular motions, because that's the way the grapes actually are. They're round, so I'm making round marks with the brush. And this goes for most things that you're painting. If an object is round, paint it round. If it's square, paint it square like a tree trunk, for example, you would paint with round motions as you go up and down the trunk. This, this is not always the case in all things. It just is a sort of rule of thumb to go by. Now here I'm establishing the tones and colour that one thing against another. And here I'm actually getting the colours that I need from the uh, bananas and the pineapples and the apples that are in my house so that I can get an accurate idea of what sort of colours they are. Having established those colours and tones, I then apply them to the drawing. And as you can see, the painting is much cleaner and sharper than the drawing would be. And here I am now establishing, uh, on the pineapple for example, all the shadows in between all the little nodules that are on the outside of the pineapple. And the colours, of course, and shadows are also different. So it's always handy to have something to look at whilst you're doing it. 
some of the shadows, by the way, inside the uh, pineapple here are lighter than the others. That's why I'm using a very small rigger brush to actually get inside and put all those fine details in. I know it's uh, fiddly and all the rest of <laughs> the problems you have with art, but you have to take your time if you're doing this kind of painting. It isn't a big war art painting or a theatre painting. It's a, a delicate um, representational painting and therefore all the painting that you're doing you have to establish the colors and reflections for example here there's a reflection of one apple against another so it needs to be darker on one side than it is on the other and also of course to reflect the color of one apple against another um, to get your tonal values means you're establishing the colors in juxtaposition next to another color and here where the color goes darker you're trying to give the illusion of a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional object so as you carry on painting through the painting have a look at it from a distance and see what you're taking in as a whole I think there's too much greens uh, in this particular painting and I think I need to change the bowl color I'm not quite happy with that it's it's too green and too light and needs to really be darker to establish it to the to the base so the colors look fairly okay where they are now I'm reasonably happy with them and the the, the drawing in of the painting looks okay so I'll go ahead now and uh, change that color I think of the bowl and uh, of course the acrylics is the best medium <laughs> if you want to make major changes in a painting because acrylics are very forgiving and as you can see I've now colored the bowl um, because I thought it would look better as a wooden bowl rather than um, a ceramic bowl which is my first intention and he, the client that is, um, when I rang him said yes he'd be quite happy to have that because it also uh, he said his furniture was a mahogany colour and that too looks uh, <laughs> quite right because it's got that depth to it. So if you're happy with it all you need to do now is put your signature it and you can give it to your client. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.